guys welcome back it's your girl yummy.com thank you for joining me again it is women's history month so we're gonna do something that i did before but different and you know i love to do it i talked about before my favorite black cartoon characters the abundance of black cartoon characters are uh scarce but strong they are few but mighty me by mighty mighty they are few but mighty then though we be but little she is fierce and speaking of being little and fierce we are going to do the same thing but with female cartoon female cartoon characters um with that being said we are going to start off strong with someone who although she be but little she is fierce and that is dot from the animaniacs don't overthink it 22 years later and i'm still a knockout Dot from the Animaniacs is one of my favorite cartoon characters ever. I remember watching her growing up and just being enamored on how feisty and sassy and such a spitfire she was. Dot, may I call you Dot? Yeah, but call me Dottie and you die. What are you gonna do to him? Unleash a series of monsters that gradually strip him down one mental and emotional layer at a time. She always held her own with the other Warner Brothers and it could have been easy to not even have her because it is called the Warner Brothers. Who says they need to have a sister? But they chose to have her and they chose to make her such a colorful spitfire. Even in the reboot, she is enamoring and hilarious and 25 years later and I'm still a knockout. Like that is my favorite, favorite line. Even if it's like the first line she says, it's the most hilarious thing. She is a a a, a strong pillar of the Warner Brothers. Like like Yakko and Wacker are dumb and dumber and wild, but Dot is never dumb. She's witty, she's crazy, she's kooky, but she's never dumb. <laughs> Speaking of, did you know that 2020 is the 100th anniversary of women getting the right to vote? That's right. We're celebrating 100 years of something women should have had all along. A new tenant. Listen up, chump. You got a real problem, and it's me. I don't need a mansplaining song about manspreading. Now woman up and help me close his legs to a reasonable distance. And that's one of the things that I love about her. She's a solid standalone character. Like, yes, it's the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot, but she is a standalone character. She's not reliant on her brothers to be such a strong and colorful character. She doesn't need anyone else to help her be who she is. She is Dot and she is unapologetic about it. And I appreciate that on a highest standard. It kind of was the first remnants of teaching me self-confidence and being a little wacky and a little kooky and a little different, but it being okay. And and I thank Dot for that because it's, it's literally the building blocks of who I am now is derived from who Dot was when I was a kid. Like, it's kind of wild, it's kind of fun, it's kind of funky, but like she is herself and unapologetic about it. Uh, and unapologetic about it and I appreciate that and I love it and I I, I, I think that uh, she is one of the most colorful characters to be sketched up especially by Warner um, that's why the right man for the job is always a woman our next character is someone who is wildly unappreciated like and when I say wildly unappreciated I mean wildly unappreciated it's Nani from Lilo and Stitch Now I know, I could have went with Lilo. I was just talking about quirky young girls who are wacky and march to the beat of their own drum. Or hula to the beat of their own skeleton beat. Who knows? But while Lilo is such an easy character to love, Nani is really what holds the thing together. Because the one of the great things about Lilo and Stitch is even though that they're talking about aliens and it's all fantastical and weird and like alien and science fiction-y, it's grounded because they are Ohana. They are family. Dad means family. Huh? 
Kana means family. Family means nobody, nobody gets, gets left, left behind. Or... Or forgotten. I know, I know. They are a family just living a normal life, uh, trying to get through day by day, who happen to have aliens for pets and family members. Um, and that's grounded because while it could float away and just be weird if it was just like Lilo and her adventures with Stitch and just whatever, you have Nani who's always there to to ground it with David, of course, and, and just like keep the family aspect real in that moment. And it also like is, is one of the things that makes Lilo and Stitch so heartfelt and like you know, such a great Disney Channel movie and series um, is that, you know, it kind of teaches this lesson of family and no matter what your family look like, looks like it is beautiful and one of the pillars of that is Nani. She doesn't get enough credit. She takes care of Lilo who, let's be real, is crazy. C crazy. Leave me alone to die. Come on Lilo, the social worker is gonna be here any minute. Lilo's crazy and also kind of a brat sometimes. Go any faster? Oh no, gravity is increasing on me. No it's not. It is too Lilo, the same thing happened yesterday. You got Like, I never forget the movie where she was just laying there. She's like, I just want to die. Like, Lilo almost got herself taken away. Okay? Like, as funny as she is, Sis really almost got herself taken away by social services. Um, and with that being said, like, like Nadi is kind of the glue that holds her together. And it's just like, you know what? Like, hey, psycho, chill out. And it's like, it's someone is needed to do that. Like, you know, just shake her a little bit because... If it was just Lilo and Stitch doing whatever the heck they wanted, we, we would live in a dangerous world, a very, very dangerous society. Um, so I think Nadi doesn't get enough credit as, as, as a, a, a figure for Lilo. Like, if she takes care of Lilo and Stitch, she's still a colorful and hilarious character. Sis is thick and we love it. We love a thick chick. Um, she works all these jobs, like, to make sure to provide for them. She not only lets her sister get an alien pet that is supposed to be a dog, she takes in two other aliens. That's two more mouths to feed. Actually, she's just ugly. Like, she's a saint. She's a saint. I would've kicked them to the curb. I don't know you. I already gotta take care of this dog that's not a dog. Uh-uh, I don't know you. Period, sis. Like, but she takes it all in stride. She takes care of her sister, and her sister is always her number one priority. And I feel like that is super appreciative. She is also a hilarious character. She's a straw man for so many jokes. And then she's just, like, also not with the shits as well. Like, she's not, like, as much as she, like, nurtures and cares for Lilo, she's, like, also, I'm not gonna put up with your nonsense, Lilo. Like, you are still my baby sister. Remember, baby sister um so I really appreciate that I think it's hilarious I think she's great I think she's a great and colorful character and responsible which is the the most she's the most responsible person on this list okay responsible is the name of the game we're going to our next one. No, no you don't understand no no what no mm. next on the list is a baddie and by baddie, I mean she's literally bad. Like, she's evil. She's an evil villain. Um, we're talking about he go, we go, she go. She Eyes the limit, thought Knox, the Louvre. Or into the 10 items or less line with 11 items, huh? Exactly! Wait, was that a serious suggestion or are you mocking me? Yeah, I'd say about 30% serious, 70% mock. We go from Kim Possible. Now, Kim Possible has a plethora of amazing female characters, Kim being the namesake of the show, her friend Monique, even Bonnie's kind of a badass in her own high school teenage cheerleader bitchy way um but Shigo is the formidable opponent let's be real it was never it was never Kim Possible like it's never Kim Possible versus Dr. Draken like it doesn't it, that doesn't make sense Dr. Draken is quite literally doofenshmirk he's he's an imbecile he's an imbecile who would never get anything done had it not been for Shigo and it's always Shigo is her arch nemesis like it's always 
pictured as Dr. Dragon is her arch nemesis, but it's really Shigo that is the arch nemesis. It's always Shigo who goes pound for pound in fights with her. Small talk? Mm, not so much. It's always Shigo who has the witty remarks. Set the main sail, wench. Okay. First of all, we don't have any sails. Second of all, call me wench again, and we'll be planning a burial at sea. And keeps Dr. Draken's head on straight and keeps the plans moving forward. He's B. Da -da -da. If I can get this plan on track, will you shut up? Granted, they're evil plans, but they are plans nonetheless. And let's not forget, she used to be a superhero. So before that whole breaking off and being a bad guy, she was a superhero. So respect. You can't walk out. Why not? Because if you don't help, I'll tell the world that you used to be a good guy. <gasps> you wouldn't. I've got a website and I'm not afraid to use it. My reputation would be shot. <sighs> I thought we were in this together. Oh, come on. Don't you know me better by now? I mean, <laughs> seriously. She's right. Yeah, keeping everyone else's power for herself and using them for evil. Yeah, that's got more of the Shigo vibe. No, I don't believe it. You may be a cranky smart mouth prone to accept of violence, but deep down, you are still a member of Team Go, a hero. Higo, I quit your stupid team years ago, and after I quit, I went to work for a guy who wants to take over the world. <gasps> it's true. But deep down... I am evil! Have I made myself clear? But she is a uh, formidable opponent. You have to be, you have to give her props. Like if you think that Kim is amazing, you have to give Shigo props because Shigo stands side by side with her pound for pound, like as a, as a, a antithesis, like it's as, as a counterpart, as a opposite, as a reflection. It's, it's amazing the things. And yet she also keeps to her, her, her like not keeps to herself, but like she also like, has her own such a sort of vibrancy like it could be so easy for her to be relegated as a sidekick like like ron ron is clearly the sidekick in the relationship between kim and ron he's the sidekick who has his own naked mole rat sidekick but with draken and shigo while she is technically the sidekick or the henchman you never see her as a lower status as like you know it's like kim ron and Wade, you know, but it's never Draken and Shigo. It's always Draken and Shigo. And sometimes it's Draken and Shigo. Like, you know, like it's, she's never lower than Draken ever, ever. Like, and if you were to ever say so, she'd kill you in your sleep. Not even in your sleep. She'll wake you up from your sleep and kill you dead. And I appreciate that. I think that like, even though she is a villain, yeah, we're not supposed to, like, root for the bad guy. But, like, she's dope. Like, she's dope. She is a feminine badass who just, like, has no problem kicking butt and taking names. And if she wanted to rule the world, she could. She just doesn't feel like it. Like, you have to respect that. I respect a person who's like, yeah, I could rule the world. Like, I could do it without him. But, like, why not just, like collect my check you know <laughs> and I appreciate that um also green is my favorite color so dope on top of that but yeah um also her superpowers are super dope um yeah so I just really appreciate Shigo as a villain I think that we don't celebrate female villains enough and I'm giving her her shout out oh no you don't what are you doing? I'm about to snatch victory! I am not gonna let this she thing just waltz in and destroy Kimmy. That's my job, you hear me? Our next person is a... Uh, she's not lovable at all. She's a prickly cactus. If I were to compare her to any plant, it would be a cactus. It's Mandy from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Quiet bone breath. And listen good, I need to get an A on this test tomorrow. And to do that, I need to get a good night's sleep. And to make sure that I get a good night's sleep, you're gonna keep Billy in check so he doesn't wake me up. Because if Billy wakes me up... 
yes? Something very terrible is going to happen. Now, you have to respect a woman, a woman, a girl, or whatever, a female woman, girl, who is able to trick the Grim Reaper into being her bitch. Like, the Grim Reaper, like, granted, the version of the Grim Reaper that's there is not, like, all scary and, like, you know, maybe the Grim Reaper from The Sims or whatever, but he's still the Grim Reaper, and she has efficiently tricked him into doing whatever she wants for eternity. Tyrant, I can't take this anymore. I do all the cooking, the cleaning, the homework, the washing, the drying, the shaking, the baking, the pooping, the scooping. You also do all the complaining. Oh, so it's like that, eh? Yeah, that's right. You know, Mandy, one of these days I'll leave you kids for good, and then you'll be sorry. Sorry, I tell ya. Ew, promises, promises. That's insane. That alone is insane. But also that she is this dark and twisted. She invented, like, forget Meredith. She invented dark and twisty. Like, Mandy and the fact of the matter is she is so dark and twisty. But then, like, she's like this blonde haired, pink dressed wearing, like, dark mistress of destruction that is hilarious the juxtaposition of her outsides and her insides it's like never judge a book by its cover because even though you see this like a sweet little blonde girl who will never smile uh she could just enslave you for all of human time she could she could you sure to learn that lesson and he the Grim Reaper clearly didn't. I think that it's hilarious. The show is hilarious. She makes the show with her witty but with her witty remarks. Yes, Billy is like the 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 dumb dumb. He's the Ed in the Ed Ed and Andy of it all of 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 the Billy and Mandy. He's like kind of the dummy who like just does whatever and gets physically hurt a lot, but he is nothing he could not be it could not be the the grim adventures of billy it could be the grim adventures of mandy just mandy if she wanted like and just torturing people i would watch that show i know you would watch that show she could do that but it could never be just billy that shows how important she is to the whole uh uh the, the whole shebang of it all you know and I think it just proves that girls are maniacal and smart and and can rule the world, like Pinky and the Brain said, you know? Just like Shigo is evil, Mandy is also a little evil. And she also has kind of a sweet spot, but it's like, it's not so apparent that I, that it's just, it's just apparent enough. And I love it and I appreciate it. And her remarks are just hilarious. I think that she is one of the funniest uh, dialogues uh especially in that show i'm leaving for school now mother in my absence i expect my clothes washed ironed and pressed my room cleaned so i've obeyed my socks color coordinated my goth metal posters framed the house remodeled the toilet spit shined my room painted black my knives polished and my secret mutant army released into the streets of ensville all done by hand <laughs> yes dear and with that being said we're going on to our last one the fifth one and that is toff from Avatar The Last Airbender. It's the real deal. I am the greatest earthbender in the world. Don't you two dunderheads ever forget. Avatar The Last Airbender, if you don't know, is a show about the Avatar who has the master of all four elements. It's pretty interesting, pretty cool. It's one of the most prolific, and prolific I guess is a weird word, it's one of the most popular cartoons known to man. It was made on Nickelodeon and, and just a general great piece of art. However, um, there's the first whole first book where they um, learn about water, where he has to learn his water skills, water bending skills. Katara also has to learn her water bending skills. Katara is another uh, female character who could have been on this list, but you know, I have some complaints about Katara. We'll talk about her uh, later in a different video. But um, yeah, so obviously they have to master all four elements. And because they have to master all four elements, they need to go on to the next element, which is earth. They need to find an earthbending teacher. And when they go to try and find an earthbending teacher, they run into this girl 
who is just dominating this underground fighting ring. She is a small blind girl. Now you're wondering, how does a small blind girl earthbend? I'll let you know. Well, she earthbends well. Amazingly, actually. Um, she feels the vibrations of the floor, kind of like, I guess a dolphin with echolocation, but I'm not entirely sure about that. But she is able to earthbend while being blind and earthbend better than anyone. She even eventually goes on to be able to metal bend. Quit your banging. You might think you're the greatest earthbender in the world, but even you can't bend metal. Even metal is just a part of Earth that has been purified and refined. You rule. Now, if that was it, I'd be like, okay, maybe she wouldn't be on this list. Maybe we wouldn't like be praising her to high heavens and letting her be the fifth and last round out of this list. But no, if that's not it. She is also the funniest character 100% on the show. Watch it, Top. I am not Top. I am Melon Lord. <laughs> It's so dark down here. I can't see a thing. Oh no, what a nightmare. Sorry. She is hilarious, smart, witty, thoughtful, thought provoking, um, kind of keeps everybody grounded, keeps the moments light. And it like with a show like Avatar, you need that because there's li they're literally fighting a war. It gets so dark sometimes. Like when you, you, you can think about how it could get so dark sometimes, but you need someone and Sokka himself just by himself can't be the only character to just like bring this levity to it. So the fact that you have so uh, the fact that you have Toph, who is a different kind of funny, like a sarcastic, more mean-spirited funny, again, in green, which you know I love the color green, um, mean-spirited funny just kind of makes it so much more elevated, um, and it makes it so much more interesting and adds so much more dimension. And um, the fact that she's with them on these adventures is amazing, especially because she hates the way they travel. She's a person, she's an earthbender. She likes to be connected to the earth. She likes to have her feet on the ground. As well on top of the fact that she can't see when her feet aren't on the ground. And the fact that they f travel by flying bison kind of pisses her off all the time. And I think that is, that is hilarious in itself. Um, the fact that we'll never forget the iconic joke where she was like, they were looking for the library and she was like, there it is. And they like looked and then she was like, because <laughs> she was like, I'm blind. How would I know where the library is, guys? Like, hello? I found something that you're not going to like. Well, it sounds like a sheet of paper, but I guess you're referring to what's on the sheet of paper. What's this? I don't know. I mean, seriously, what's with you people? I'm blind. Um, But I think that that is hilarious. So on top of being a hilarious character, she is a uh, earth bending master. She creates metal bending. She goes on to be like the head of the police force. She is still brutal and rules with an iron fist and just a colorful and hilarious, but still kind of thoughtful character. It's okay. One of the good things about being blind is that I don't have to waste my time worrying about appearances. I don't care what I look like. I'm not looking for anyone's approval. I know who I am. And that's why I wanted to put her and include her on this list. I want to make sure I included her on this list. Now, that is my top five. And while I could just easily end the list there and we would be done, I cannot ignore my heart when I say that I grew up, you know, watching all these cartoons, but my favorite, favorite cartoon to watch when I was a kid was in fact Teen Titans. Teen Titans, I love that show so much. It was 
so amazing. I might do a whole nother video just talking about how amazing that show was with the writing and the character development and the superpowers and staying true to the to the to the um to the to the comic book aspects of it all but still uh monopolizing the the wellness of the writers and and, and kind of creating these crazy scenarios and developing these characters so beautifully um and just the storytelling of it all and while I love the storytelling of the the storytelling of it all, I cannot make this list without talking about my favorite Titan herself, Raven. Raven was by far my favorite Titan. In fact, my favorite episode of Teen Titan is the episode where they go into Raven's mind and you see all of these different layers of her. And it kind of peels back because it's so easy to look at Raven and be like, oh, she's just like, she's just dark. No, she has all this complexity and all this strength within her that she is always trying to keep in check. And that is why she has that mantra. That's why she she has all these pieces of her. Like she's part demon. Like she has this 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 darkness in her that she needs to keep in control or it will control her, literally. And 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 so the fact that you know that with like all these other different things and all these other different uh, uh, parts adding to it and her developing and learning how to be a, good, a better friend and all these like human-like skills that like I guess she technically should know but doesn't. You may have created me. But you were never my father. Fathers are kind. Fathers protect you. Fathers raise you. I was protected by the monks of Azurath. I was raised by my friends. They are my family. This is my home. And you are not welcome here. Azurath Metrion Zinto! It's just amazing and, and especially when it's her and Starfire because Starfire is literally her exact, exact opposite. Starfire is always happy, always bubbly, always smiling but um, and has this power that she pushes out like while Raven is like kind of keeping clenched, Starfire is blowing out and it's so, it's so interesting interesting to see Raven and Starfire interact. We might journey to the mall of shopping or perform braiding maneuvers upon each other's hair or... You wish to be alone? How could you tell? But also not just Raven and Starfire, Raven and any other character, Interact is so interesting to watch and you see the development of her character throughout the series and it's just, she's just my favorite. She always has been. I've always wanted to dress up as her as um for Halloween but yeah the, so she's just my favorite I had to mention her if even if it was briefly on this list because she's just amazing also I dressed up as Dot for Halloween this year that just tells you how much I love her okay I made my brothers dress up as Yakko and Wacko and I dressed up as Dot okay that's how much I love the girl let's go in the garden You'll find something waiting right there where you left it, lying upside down. When you finally find it, you'll see how it's faded. The underside is lighter when you turn it around. Everything stays right where you left it. Everything stays, but it still changes. So slightly, daily and nightly, in little ways, when everything stays. I want to slow dance with you. I just want. 
chance I've got the moves I'd like to prove I wanna slow dance with you anyways thank you guys so much for watching it's your girl yummy.com don't worry I will be back so stay tuned my internet friends see you soon